Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and one of the most popular practical prints I've done is the fix for my refrigerator. I featured it in a video where I talked about my top five practical prints. In fact, I even had an honorable mention that, as many pointed out, took up nearly half of the video. <laughs> that was awesome. But the real winner, it seems, from that video was the fix that I modeled for my refrigerator. I used Autodesk's Fusion 360 to create a part that had been broken, and then I printed it out. I talked about printing it in multiple materials before finally settling on a flexible material, but even the flexible material itself has shown wear and tear, and the stress on the material was too much for it, so I had to do something different. And I figured this was a good opportunity for me to show you how I went about modeling that piece and what material I settled on. Let's, uh, let's do this. Are you ready? Go. Ah, oh, welcome back. Well, I should probably show you where we started. This is the original piece that broke on the refrigerator. It goes on the top like this and as one of the doors comes in the little flap that keeps the other door sealed kind of comes in here and it flips like that and then there's a piece that hangs down here that catches it and tucks it back out as you open the door the problem is if this flap for some reason is open and the door is slammed that piece doesn't last very long this is injection molded plastic and not that strong when compared to the strength of a small child slamming the refrigerator door like I said before, the fix was originally done in this flexible NGEN material from ColorFab. It's a wonderful material, but the stress on the material and the thickness here where I needed it a little bit thinner which just wasn't enough. And the material started to degrade and eventually fail at doing its job. I needed to find a better material. And along with finding a better material, this is a good opportunity for me to show you how exactly I went about measuring this, the broken part for making a model and how I went about modeling from those measurements. I do need to warn you, truth be told, I suck. I absolutely suck at modeling and measuring and I'm gonna show you how I do it, but take it with a grain of salt. There's probably a million different ways to do what I did and a good 75% of those million different ways are probably better than the way I did. The whole point of this exercise is for me to learn something and for me to share what I learned. So keep that in mind while you're watching this little tutorial. To get started, we need to, like I said, measure this piece. All right, we need to measure this piece right here. This is the broken piece. And I'm gonna do it my way. Obviously, lots of people have their own ways, but there's gonna be a whole bunch of different ways to do this the right way. So first what I do is I trace around the side like this, and then I draw in where the screw goes, right there, and that leaves this. And what I'm gonna do is measure this distance, and I'm gonna measure this distance, and that's gonna tell me where that screw hole needs to go. Let's get out our trusty calipers. These are good. I've zeroed them out. And my super precise <laughs> measuring says this is 13.19. See, 13.19. Let's measure the other side. And that's going to be 20.77. 20.77. Now the idea here is we want to measure as much as possible because it's gonna make modeling easier. So what we need to do is find this length. We need to find the height. We need to find out where that starts. Kind of that section right there. And there's this little, this, this section right here that the flap hits against when you open the door. We'll eventually find this entire length, but we're gonna do it halvesies. Let's do that. So, well first things first, let's just Make sure we're zeroed. Let's measure this. That looks to be 44.47. 44.47. I think that I'm gonna measure to the top of the, of this part right here. 
Like on this one, I'm gonna eyeball it. As long as the screw holes are in the right place, it's gonna attach just fine. I'm gonna put that at, boy, it's a little slick. 34.19 for the halfway point. 34.19. For these holes where the screws go, let's see the, the big one right there, 11.32. Oh, small one. I'll draw the big one. The big one is 11.32. The smaller one though, it's tiny, 4.48. 4.48. And this section right here where where the curve starts. We need to measure how far in that starts. That looks to be 8.53. 8.53. And we know that this arc here, essentially the top of it ends up where the screw holes are. So we know that that's going to be even and we can just take it up that far when we model it. What else do we need? Oh, that's right. We need this piece right here. Let's see. We will measure how far in it is from the side where it starts. So, 28.10. All right, so over here, 28.10. It looks like this piece kind of goes up and it goes down and like that. So that's what we're gonna build in. But we need to know how, how wide it is. Let's see. I was gonna estimate it with my fingers while I have calipers right here. We're gonna make it. We're gonna call it 20. It's going to be 20 millimeters wide. All right, we've got where the screws go, this length. We know how, <laughs> how tall it is. It is, we get a good, good measurement here, 11.34. 11.34. There we go. We have the where the arc starts, we have where the screws go, we have this length, we know how the halfway is here. Let's see. We know this length, we know the height. I think we're good. Now to bring it into Fusion 360. All right, we're in Fusion 360. Let's get started. I'm gonna choose my rectangle. I'm gonna choose this plane. And I'm gonna drag it out. All right, it allows me to type in values at this point, and I'm gonna do 44, wait, where'd you go? Get back here. I'm gonna do 44.47, I'm gonna hit tab, and then I know this value at that halfway point is 34.19. There's our rectangle. It's a glorious looking rectangle. Now we need to add in the circles for the uh, screws. To do that, I'm gonna do a line. I'm gonna get my line, and I'm gonna go down to here. But wait a minute, Joel, these aren't circles, these are lines. I will explain in just a moment. What I need to do is find the center point to add the circles. And this this is the way that I'm doing it. This is the way that I thought would work. I There's probably a better way. What I'm doing here is I hit D for dimension. I selected two lines and now I can type in that value and that's 13.19. Now I'm still in dimension mode, so I can go here and here, and it lets me put in the value for that distance. And I know that distance is 20.77. Awesome. Let's go up here to sketch circle, center diameter circle. Now that I have that center, I can bring it out. And this outer circle is 11.32 millimeters. I'm gonna hit C again. I'm gonna bring out this inner circle, and I know that one is gonna be 4.48 millimeters. Awesome. Let's select this line because we no longer need it, and this line because we no longer need it. What's next? Well, I know I know we have this piece down here where this arc is gonna go. And when we mirror this over, I want it to be in the same spot. So what I'll do is I'll grab my line, 
bring it down here. I'll hit D for dimension. And I measured that at 8.53. There we go. I hit escape, which gets me out of the dimension tool. All right, see, it says stop sketch. So we're still in sketch mode. Now what I can do is go up to sketch and go mirror. First, it's gonna ask me what I want to mirror the objects. Well, I'm gonna select all these lines. This one, this one, this one. Next is the mirror line. I'm gonna click this, select the mirror line, and everything has been copied over. Oh, that looks good. I'm gonna hit okay. This line here we no longer need, that center line, we can get rid of that. These lines are good because they're for the arc. Let's put in the arc. Go up to sketch, go up to arc, and a three point arc, because we can we know the start point, we know the end point, and we know that the arc was gonna go about as high as those screw holes. I'm gonna click here, here, and up we go. Go right there. That yeah, looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit escape to get out of the arc tool. And now these measuring lines that we used, I can get rid of them because we don't need them. We've got the screw holes, we've got the arc. Now we need to know that little piece that's going to exist right here. And I think I have an idea. I know that it's going to measure about nine millimeters that way. And we did measure it at being 20 millimeters across, 28.1 millimeters from the side. So I'm gonna go here like this. I'm just gonna draw it out. I'm gonna hit escape to get out of the line tool. Now we can use the dimension tool to place things. I'm gonna click here and here. And I believe I measured that at 28.1. And now this here, I can click here and here and bring it out. I measured that at nine. Uh oh something happened. These are two separate lines, they're not connected. So when you measure nine millimeters, it's gonna push it down that way because it wasn't nine exactly. I'm gonna undo that. Now what I can do is click here. I can click this fix. That, that little lock means that it's gonna not move. It's locked into place, it you turned green. So we know it's locked and now when I put in nine, it actually raises that up rather than moving this line down. All right. Uh, oh, one more, one more here and here. I know that was 20. Awesome. Here we go. There is our sketch. We can hit stop sketch right here. And now what we need to do is extrude it. To do that, we're going to hit the E key. We're going to select this face and this face. And we're going to bring it up 11.34 millimeters. I believe we measured that. But wait, where's the sketch? Don't worry, this little light bulb turned off. Let's turn it back on. That's what happens when you extrude it. These line, or this plane right here, right, and these, these right here. Might as well select them. These are the pieces that need to hold this all together. And these are the pieces that go between the screw heads and the rest of the refrigerator. So I'm going to hit E. I'm gonna call those 1.75 millimeters. That's it. One last thing really for the design of this. In the original piece, it had a, a slant in the back and I believe that was for material removal and material savings rather than a functional piece. So what I can do, I can add that in. I'm gonna go modify and I'm gonna go chamfer. I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna go here and change that to distance and angle. I'm gonna move that angle up just a bit. I'm gonna bring this out and then angle down. Let's see, just like that. Hit okay. Let's rotate around. That looks pretty darn good. For extra credit, you can always add some fillets. Up on modify and fillet. You select the edges that you want to add a fillet to. And then you can type it in. I usually do a 0.5 millimeter fillet and it rounds them a little bit. It's not required for this, but you can if you want. Well, we've already got this done. This is awesome. Hey, we took measurements and turned it into a 3D model. Let's save it out and bring it into Cura. Within Cura, I'm gonna select body one, that thing we just made, and here it is. I do need to rotate it and let me get a better view on this. So we'll. 
We'll put that piece flat on the print bed. Uh, let's see, move. I think I need to do that. There we go. So here's the piece. Look at that, right on the Ultimaker. I know up here it says CPE, but I'd, I've already printed this out and this was nylon. So it's just, it's just configured to show what's in the printer currently. So what I can do, I can go to layers here and we can look at them. That's pretty cool. That'll print fine. All right, well, I, like I said, I've, I've printed this and I used Talman's nylon and I filmed it in a time lapse. So let's see it. Are you ready? Time lapse. That Ultimaker 3 prints nylon like a crazy boss awesome machine. Obviously, I've got links down in the description to Tallman's nylon material and the Ultimaker 3 if you'd like to pick up one of those on your own. Here is the part. This is it. This is it right here. It's 50% infill, and that's probably overkill for what I needed, but that little part, this piece right here, the one that broke off, that's strong right there. That's not going anywhere. Let's get this in the refrigerator and test it out. To put this in the refrigerator, it's just two screws and I'm using a power drill to put it in there. Once it's up in, you close the door to test it out and sure enough, it works like a champ. That said, I bet it's strong enough where I could probably tow the refrigerator from this piece alone. All right, there you have it. We took a broken piece that wasn't full. We were able to take measurements of this piece using calipers. We took the measurements from the calipers and translated those to 3D modeling software, in this case, Fusion 360. From there, we chose a very good material, a Tolman nylon. We loaded it in a good machine, the Ultimaker 3. We printed it out, we test fit, and then we closed the fridge for good because it works. It works great. I can safely say that this refrigerator is fixed and I think uh, I don't have to worry about this part any longer. I think other parts on this refrigerator are going to fail before that nylon part. But hey, this was fun. I hope the tutorial was okay. Leave any questions if you have any down below. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm by far no means an expert at all, but I've learned a few things and hopefully this is just one in a series of videos I can do about useful things I print that fix problems around the heart. Hey, you know what? Give this a thumbs up if this was useful. Give it, um, give it two thumbs up if somehow that's technically possible. You know what? Find me on Twitter and throw me a high five. That'd be great. I'm at Joel Telling. Uh, for now though, a big thanks to my patrons who financially support me at patreon.com and uh, hug each other more often. I love you guys. As always, high five.